Okay, so I, I just have a short thing to talk about today. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, um, sort of uh, the f follow up to where we were, where Mike and I have gone in terms of our calculations. I'm just going to grab a. Uh... All right, so the idea is that we go from the theory. So this is. This is um, some syntactically presented theory, Levere theory, um, which has um, therefore a monad attached to it. So we can go from there to um, uh, the HOM set, um, you know, um, blank to theory. Op, so the arrows are all turned around. Um, so I'll I'll call this. Um, I'll just make a note in in squirrely braces that we'll call this um, theory hat. Okay. So that's the so if I so I don't have to keep writing that. Um. Uh. Did I get that right? Hang, hang on one second here. Just one. I think I have that right. Um, anyway, so uh, then we go. I, I may have I may have gotten that twisted around, but um, so so now um, what Christian does is he goes from here via sub to poset, and then he takes the. Uh, Yaneda construction. Uh, uh, sorry, the the um, the growth and deconstruction, which I'll just call G. Um, uh, so I'll call it G of um, uh, G of. So so this this is Yaneda here, uh, and then he does poset. So G of Y ring. Pause. Uh, oops. I should do uh, sub ring pause ring. Um, uh, you need right. So that's uh, normally that would be done with an integral, but I don't have an integral. So that's kind of the construction and what we're looking at is um, I don't want to go through pause um, and there's a reason for that and let me see if I can bring up the reason um, hang on a second post set collapses arrows which are really important now uh, let me um, Let me um, bring that up. Um, so here we go. I'll start the screen share again. Okay, so the issue is that um, in in Curry Howard, we not only have a relationship between formula and types, we also have a relationship between programs and proofs, even to the point where beta reduction corresponds to cut elimination, right? So getting to a cut free proof is effectively the same as getting to a lambda term that doesn't have any reducible applications. So that's the idea. Um, and so we, we really would like to preserve this um, when we move out from intuitionistic logic. So obviously one of the closest places that we, <coughs> that we get is um, one of the next closest logics is classical logic, right? So you add 
excluded middle, um, which means that the classical negation is involutive, right? So not not a is the same as a. All right, and so the idea is that we we add um, a contravariant functor um, so that you get you know so if if objects are the types and proofs are the morphisms, then we'll get um, you know the usual De Morgan rules, right? So um, you'll you'll have some um, monoidal uh, um, construction on the objects for and and or, and you'll you'll uh, and the De Morgan laws will will be as expected. Um, the problem is um, all the proofs um, between two formulae A and B collapse down to a single a single arrow. Um, and there are lots of different ways to show this. Um, uh, for example, suppose you have a proof of B, you know, uh, a pr one proof of B and uh, another proof of B. Then we can apply weakening, so we can uh, we can add uh, an extra hypothesis, um, uh, and then we cut, so let's add A and uh, the negation of A, and then we cut, uh, and then we contract. Okay, so, so from these two proofs, uh, we get down to a proof of B. Um, the problem is uh, we'll end up getting a non-deterministic choice. Um, uh, so either you get um, this or this. Now, if we want the, um, if you want a confluent uh, cut elimination, you're forced to identify these two proofs. Um, are, are, go ahead. Can I ask, are, are, are you saying that uh, these two Bs are not the same? They are the same B. They are the same B, the, but the proofs are not. So the, the, uh, the, the fact that they're the same is why we can apply the contraction rule, right? So we go from the two Bs down to a B, right? But the proofs are not the same. But if you want the system, but now, in the, in the, now that we have a non-deterministic choice um, in terms of which direction to go, you know, proof one or proof two, we're if we want this to be confluent, we are, we're going to have to identify the two proofs. Um, so the problem is it doesn't just happen because of weakening. It also happens uh, via contraction. Um, so, um, uh, but I, I won't go. I won't go into that too much. the 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 the, ma the main point is, as is well established. So, if you want a categorical version of this, um, Joyal pointed it out in um, these uh, these references here. Let's see if I can find them. But this paper is an excellent paper to understand what is wrong with. Um, classical logic. Um, uh, what is this paper? Can... Uh, so this is Lutz uh, Strasberger, uh, the problem with, uh, with um, uh, proof nets for classical logic. What is the problem with, uh, with proof nets for classical logic? Um, so let's see. Uh, so he... Uh, okay, yeah, so so the top three um, references in the bibliography give uh, deeper details if you want that. So Lambeck and Scott talk about it, Girard talks about it, and um, um, Strasberger gives a deeper um, discussion. Um, so there, there are lots of different approaches, but but sort of the the, the point is, if we factor our construction through POSET, we're going to collapse a lot of 
um, proof structure, uh, which is exactly the opposite of what we want. Um, so, so, but the, but the other, the other intuition is, um, whenever what we, what we want this map to do, th this map here sub is to present to us a, um, uh, so, so, so whatever, how do I say this? So I've got, I've got theory hat, which is coming to us from Yoneda. Uh, and I want to go from there to what is going to play. And I, I can kind of ignore this bit of it for now. Okay. Now here, uh, the reason we get a post set is not that we're, we have an arbitrary mapping to post set. It's that we're taking the power object. And uh, so the power object in, um, uh, uh, you know, in, uh, in, in this setup is going to be the set of all subsets. So we know what that looks like for classical logic. We also know what the power object is going to look like for linear logic. Um, even if we don't know how to, um, you know, the canonical way to derive it from this starting point. Um, so if, if, if this is, you know, the map sub, right, then what we want is something else that's playing the role of sub, but instead of producing poset, produces quantals. Uh, so we call this Q sub. Um, and and we there's a we know that the free quantal on some set S is just the power set of all the sequences. So you form the sequences, then you take the power set, and then you can get any other quantal by adding relations in. Um, right, so you'll identify certain, uh, uh, you'll have some equations that, that, that identify certain uh, operations. Um, uh, so so, uh, so the, 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 the point is uh, we want to look at what's a natural, um, what's a natural map that, that will, that will provide us quantals. Um, and Mike, and well, we, we looked at an obvious map, which doesn't work because we end up with the wrong kind of typing. Um, and then we looked at a pointwise map and there are effectively two ways to do a pointwise map. One way factors through POSET first and the other way does not. So what we're what we're looking at is is you know the 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 consequences of um, of each of these different calculations these different constructions in the light of this paper or or not this paper specifically but in the in the light of of this understanding about um, about uh, 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 proofs. Because we, uh, well, we know that the linear proofs are not identified. Uh, so what we want to do is to, is to leave the linear proofs, um, uh, you know, non-identified. So we, we get um, proper, uh, proper um, you know, accounting. So, so we, don't, we, don't get the, uh, we don't get this erasure of proof information, which would be the equivalent of the erasure of programming information. So that's, uh, that's, that's what we're looking at right now. Um, uh, this means that uh, you're carrying some, some additional information about, uh, about each proof. And then also, uh, do you need to compare uh, proofs? Because uh, if, uh, if two proofs are producing B, uh, they, they're saying the same thing, but they, they doesn't have to be the same, right? The proof right. itself. Right, so, so, so it's much easier to understand this in terms of programs, right? Right. So, so think about the natural numbers and um, think about, you know, uh, 
all functions that go from the natural numbers to the natural numbers. There are lots and lots of those, right? Mm -hmm. Squaring um, any polynomial, right? And so we don't want to identify all the polynomials, right? Mm -hmm. Right. That's that's essentially what we're what we're suggesting is that is that though you know those programs should be differentiated, right? So if we if we go if we go through poset, then we're going to identify all those programs, and that's that's a non-starter, right? That's not interesting. Mm. Uh, can you explain this in, in terms of uh, natural numbers? This means that we are losing. Well, I mean, think think or... about it. If you if you if you if you say that there is only one program from the naturals to the naturals, you've lost a lot of information, mm -hmm. right? So so like you know like all the polynomials, right? So x, you know, in or so a times x, right? For all the right um, uh, a uh, times x squared plus, uh, oops, where's the plus? Plus uh, b times x, right? And so on and so forth, yada, 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 right? That's a lot of programs, right? And we're saying they're all the same. Mm, I see. That's not useful, right? And uh, to identify each other, uh, the, the, uh, like uh, uh, different variation, uh, we want to look inside, right? To uh, or or carry some additional information outside. Uh, well, I mean, quite likely, um, what we want to do, well, quite likely, what we'll have to do is to give up something like confluence. Like, like what Girard does in trying to construct a classical, I mean, to, uh, to, in trying to build a constructive account of classical logic is to say, you know, there are a bunch of things we have to give up. There are three different things we have to give up. Let's give up confluence, right? Because confluence is the thing that, that you know, uh, doesn't happen in concurrent systems. So we're, we're happy to, we're happy to, to, um, um, jettison that, like in the case of the pi calculus, the pi calculus is not confluent. So uh, for classical logic, let's give up confluence. See, see lambda is confluent, right? Uh, just, just, just to remind everyone what confluence is. Yeah, please. It's the diamond property, right? So I have some lambda term, say M, right? And I, I can go... Um, I can, I can go, uh, oh, hang on. Let me, uh, so over here, oops. Um, I can, I can, I can go to say in one. And over here, I can go to N2, All right? So I have some lambda term, which if I reduce, um, you know, I get to a point where I have a choice in terms of reduction. I can re reduce one way or the other. So um, it is the case that there is some, um, um, N3, that um, both in one and in two evaluate to. So it's the, it's the diamond property. Does that make sense? Mm, I'm trying to think about some. So, so, so you, have, you have some lambda term that has two reductions in it, right? So there's two applications inside the term. So which, because there's two applications, you are free to, you know, evaluate one or the other. And now, so, so, so let's say, let's say you have F applied to 
one plus two and you know uh, three plus four. So I can I can evaluate the one plus two first, or I can evaluate the three plus four first before I apply f. Oh, I see, I see. They're they're not connected directly, and but but if I it, no matter which order I evaluate them in, when I apply f to the results of those two computations, I I get an, an n three, right? I see. Like we have two parameters for a function and we can yeah. know it. As an example, mm -hmm. that, that's one example. Mm -hmm. there, there are lots of other examples, but that's one. Mm -hmm. So, so lambda is confluent, right? But that doesn't mean that classical logic is, or that the programs we want to associate with classical logic should be, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's, that was Girard's argument. Um, so, yeah, so, so con confluence is, is, uh, is actually not so great in the case of, of concurrent programming, right? Pi is not confluent. Rho calculus is not confluent. So the reason we go down that path of discussion, discussing confluence is because um, we, we wanted, uh, um, you were asking whether or not we add information. Well, it could be that we take away an assumption or we take away some desideratum like confluence. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So that, that, that's, um, that's essentially all I want, wanted to talk about is that we're, we're kind of narrowing in really um, the, the, a question that is really interesting to me is um, in, in order to get this far, what we've had to focus on is um, you know, the, 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 the structure of this thing and figure out where we get like, like this, this part here is giving us subtyping this part here is giving us the structural components. And this part here is giving us the, the, you know, the sort of collection, what I was calling the collection construction. Um, I, which is why I was looking at V enriched stuff. And so I thought, well, you know, like, like before we get to V enriched, let's just ask ourselves, you know, what is the power object? And that seems to be yielding fruit. But what I don't understand is like for a given notion of logic, what's the corresponding notion of power object? Right, so, so I mean, I, I've, I've made some proposals, right? So the, the kind of proposals that I'm looking at have to do with, you know, if, you're, if, you, if you have some container, some container theory C, okay, then, um, then we should be able to look at all the contexts of C. Um, oops. Come on. Um, so, something like this, right? So, so C is some type constructor, um, right? So it's, C is really going to be some uh, some parametric type constructor, right? Which means that the derivative of C makes sense. And then, um, so, so then what we want is, um, uh, uh, C, uh, we want the C of all the derivative of, of the derivative of C, something like that, right? So these are, uh, oh, sorry. It's not, and it's not just the derivative. It's all the splittings, right? So it's going to be a pair, a derivative together with a C, right? So, so that's kind of what I was thinking of. As so so you know I, I, I can I can decompose 
all the all the things in C into you know the subcomponents, and I'll have to make it specific, right? I'll have to have witnesses for each of these decompositions, um, right? So 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 in particular, I've got to have some, uh, you know, so so if I if I have a if I have a particular T, and I've taken C of that, right? Um, then I, I wanna I wanna know that I've got some f, which is my witness. <sighs> I'd like that to be little f, please. F is f is my witness um, that um, there's a that when I apply. Uh, this thing to that thing right I get over to that thing and in fact, this is this is an ISO, right? So so this is this is a that's an ISO, All right? So I want a bunch of those, right? So what what that what that's saying is that I I took one of these, I broke it apart in this way, and when I reassemble the parts, I get back that, right? So, so then, and I, and I want one for all the different ways you can break that apart. So that's kind of the, that's, that's kind of the idea. So, so then this is the, the, the general power object. Um, and that's not the same as the, you know, collection of monomorphisms idea from category theory. Um, but, but, but the, the, you know the 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 point is I, I want so it's hard to see for example how this arises as one of these it's hard to see how this arises as some you know um, you know equivalence class of monomorphisms construction um, so I'm I'm left wondering you know what you know what's the general idea of a power object um, here, right? I mean, I, I know linear logic uses this, so I get to pull that out of the hat. Um, but the, the general question is, where's that coming from? What's the algorithm that produ produces this, that allows me to produce this predictably? So that's, that's sort of the next step in the puzzle. As, as, you know, assuming that the point-wise definition works here, um, then I, I want to be able to um, I want to be able to answer that question satisfactorily. Right. So if someone is going to probe this construction, um, I, I need to be able to tell them what you can put right here. Um, you know, so so what kind of parts construction is reasonable so that's what we're that's what we're working on now and it, it's it's astonishing to me that there is no theory of this in 2020 i'm just like i i, I remain floored that when thinking about you know all of the collections libraries that have been designed no one has wanted to line it up with no one has seen the possibility of lining it up with logic, nor have they, they struggled with these questions. So that's kind of the, uh, you know, that, that, that to me is very interesting. Anyway, that's it. That's all I had to say. Any questions? So what, what you said with C is uh, more, uh, very very abstract way of looking at uh, collections, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So I'm thinking of C as like a data type, like set or list or graph or whatever, 
right? So I, I can set, I can have a set of integers, right? I can have a list of integers. I can have a graph of integers, right? And because, because, you know, most of those kinds of indefunctors are really well defined. I have a notion of a derivative of that functor. So then I know that these things correspond to breaking the thing into pieces. Right? That's mm -hmm. right. That's for, 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 for example, for, for list, uh, this is just bas basically means uh, splitting the elements. That's right. That's exactly. another. So very yeah, simple. That, that, that's mm -hmm. correct. Or for tree, it's knocking a hole in the tree. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's, it's, a, it's a context and a subtree. That's what that is. Okay. And, and so then I, I don't want to take the set of those or the list of those. I want to take the C of those. That's, that's, that's the intuition I'm following. You're all, always uh, thinking very abstract and... <laughs> And, and this is like very short time to, <laughs> to observe. Well, I mean, if, if this, if C is list or set, then this is, if, it, if it's set, then this is set of set, right? Which is power set, mm -hmm. right? If it's list, it's list of list, mm -hmm. right? If it's tree, it's tree of tree, right? This is, it's all very, very natural. Uh, I, I'm trying to, to connect this, uh, 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 to, to uh, with the problem what you described and so so, so here uh, what is pause pause is the power set it's the set of all subsets right so this are is you saying the, 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 this is like a specific c or well c c ranges over our different notion of collections right so so here we our notion of collection is set and so the power object is going to be the power set so if, what do I want to do if I want to generalize that notion? Well, category theory has a particular approach to this, but I, I'm trying to be a lot more syntactic, right? At least with this, with this approach here. So I'm saying, you know, you're giving me a type constructor, which is your container. And then you tell me how to split it up into parts. So I consider all the different parts, all the different ways of splitting it up, and then I collect them with a C. That's the exact analogy of taking a set, finding all the subsets, and then collecting all the subsets as a set. Right? But the, the, the yes. one trick, yes. the one trick I have to do is to make sure that when you split it up, you didn't leave anything out. So I need to I need to have some witness, some proof that the splitting, you know, does its thing. Mm. I see. So for, for list, uh, that, that would mean uh, the, the index, for example. For example. Right? Yeah. yeah, that's right. Mm, okay, okay, okay. I see. So, so um, but, the, but the point is that whether you use the category monomorphism thing or you use this construction or, or whatever you, it, it, it doesn't yield quant, right? And so, so, so now I'm like, well, where does where does this come from, right? That that's what I want to know, because I want I want the whole thing to be completely algorithmic. There should be no art in this, no no in, inventive step. <laughs> so that's 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 what what I'm investigating next, right? Assuming that the pointwise thing goes through, then I I, I want to know why this thing, you know, like, how do I fill this position? What, what, what is a reasonable candidate here? So that's, that's the next, the next word. And I, I think this stuff is just like really interesting, right? It was like, what well, this gets right to the heart of programming language design, right? If you want to design a good collection library, and you want that collection library to really have a good relationship to your type system and not just be, you know, willy nilly. And by the way, you know, we've seen dozens of languages get this wrong, not once, but repeatedly, um, which has cost the industry lots and lots and lots of money. It seems like it would be really worthwhile to sit down and answer these questions. Right? It seems like we have the tools 
to write down the questions and investigate them and get them to work out properly. <laughs> right. That, so, so really, if you wanted to design a good collections library for the next generation language like Rolang, then answering these questions would seem to be uppermost in your mind. That's that's sort of why, you know, I spend all this time thinking about this stuff. And when you say co collections library, you, you, you don't mean just mapping over or, or traversing or, or uh, these things, right? Well, what, well, really what we want to know is we want to we want to have a decent theory of how the notion of collection corresponds to the notion of type. That's the, how type and collection fit with each other. Because then notions of mapping and other kinds of things will, will um, have a kind of coherence that they don't have in uh, practically all of the collection libraries in all of the language designs. Can you can you uh, uh, make some example? Uh, uh, what what we can get is this, uh, for example, uh, that? Uh... So, for example, I would in this particular case, I can see that the collections have a certain kind of property, which is that um, there's no copying without paying for it. Hmm. Or, or, or sorting and uh, shuffling. For example, yeah, you can begin to distinguish mm. shorting from, uh, sorting from shuffling, yes. Mm, I see now, I see, I see. So, so, so those, are the, mm. those, those are the kinds of things that you, like you, your type system ought to be able to tell you, right? And, and you, you have a certain kind of trade-off, you have a certain kind of payment, right? The more the types tell you about the nature of the program, the longer and longer the type checking is going to take until it finally gets undecidable. But if you get this, if you get this algorithm right, then you can dial it. You can say, you know, you know, how much information you want in your types, right? And, and, and therefore, you know, like, you know, like you, 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 you can go and explore the boundary Right. Oh, if I if I go too far this way, types types become undecidable. Oh, if I go too far this way, you know, types collapse into non-interesting stuff. Right. But but somewhere, you know, along this boundary, there's a lot of interesting stuff I can detect at the type level, which means I can detect it at compile time. That's... I see, like like a non-empty list that we have. No, now, yeah, exactly. Like a very simple example. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I see. Yeah, that, that would be great if we can <laughs> we can create like a library which is based on something like meaningful because right now this this non empty list is something that yeah yeah exactly I mean there's there's like there's there's all kinds of you know like there's this infinite variety that you can go and explore and languages like R and S have have really explored some backwater notions but here you know what we what we want is to is to get is to ferret out the relationships. But, and, and the reason types are the right tool is because they guarantee substitutability, right? right? It's like when the programs type the same, then I can substitute the program. I can substitute one program for the other, right? And so that's gonna give you your measure of, of oh, I've, I've got this sorted out because I'm willing to substitute this program for that program, but not this other program for that program, right? And, and, and the types, the type, when, when the types are d detecting that kind of substitution, right, that's when you know you've got it balanced out correctly. So anyway, it's... It, it, uh, <clears throat> uh, do you need for that uh, to look at uh, reductions? Yes, uh, that's exactly yeah. right. What we want is the proof structure for the to match up with the 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 the, the program structure that's mm. right i see yeah so basically in in current languages this this is missing we we, we don't that's right uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's no there's no good theory of it that's exactly right mm, okay. haskell has a little better 
um, because they're intuitionistic. But, you know, so Haskell is, Haskell is built on system F and system F is a really glorious type system. Um, but the, the, pro the problem is that, um, you know, you have to do a lot of relaxation to get uh, interesting programs um, and, uh, and yeah, Haskell's type system is Turing complete. <laughs> And uh, with, with the, the dependent types, uh, can we achieve s s something? Well, dependent types is, is, is one avenue to get, get towards these kinds of things. What I'm hoping for is, is, a, is a general account which will, which will subsume dependent types. Mm, I see. Right. Because, because dependent types are also, uh, doesn't seem to be like very simple to model. I mean, no, uh, just, no. No, it is. Red black trees in dependent types are, are super complicated, and this is like a simple structure. So yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the, the the thing the thing that unifies these those two different investigations is as soon as you have dependent types, where where you can have values that are types, you're really starting to inch towards um, types are collections, Right. And that's kind of what I'm getting at here is that there's a broad range of types that are just about collection semantics. There are a bunch of types that are about structural stuff, right? But there's a broad piece, a, 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 a module of types that are about collection semantics. Mm. And the structural, I, I, you mean like, for example, records, when you have some fields and well, I mean, even, 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 even more, I have a syntax tree that I can pattern match against. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I see. Yeah, that's, that's really right. So a lot, a lot of, uh, a, a lot of types, like it, once you, once you have this data program duality, then pattern matching against syntax tree is the same as, as type checking. Yeah, I, I was surprised when uh, Dan Connolly was uh, one Saturday. He was uh, doing some some Idris stuff, and uh, basically in, in that moment, I, I figured out that most of the proofs in Idris are basically just pattern matching on the uh, AST. Yeah, that's and, correct. <laughs> that's right. I, I, I was just surprised. I, I didn't realize this before. Yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of folklore that's not you know in the mainstream programming. Anyway, thank you guys so much. I'll see some of you in the uh, uh, dev stand up in just a little while. Thanks. Ciao, ciao. Bye bye. Thank you.